John 11 and 1, say amen. If you're still looking, there it is for you on the screen. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that, I, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus, let me just tell you, sometimes you get sick and go through stuff so God can get glory. Come on, somebody. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Amen. And here we find a place, a, a time where Jesus Christ delayed his departure, put these people in a bind. But yet he arrived right on time. And I've heard the title somewhere else, but I'm stealing someone's title. I don't know who, but I want to title it Delayed But Not Denied. Delayed but not denied. Hold somebody's hand, amen. And why don't we pray, Lord? Thank you, God, for that you, Lord, trust me with the delays. That when I don't know where you are, and perhaps today in the house, I know there has to be someone, for you gave me this word, Father. Someone that's wondering where you are. I want you, Lord, today to use me to speak, Father. To me and to your people, Lord, as they listen in to what you told me, I pray that they would be beneficiaries of that which you've given to me out of your word. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we give you praise. Why don't we just put our hands together and magnify the name of Jesus. Thank you again. We love you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. There will always be seasons in our lives of times and that are testings and uh, moments when everything we attempt seems to go wrong and in spite of or regardless of how much you pray or how consecrated you are, uh, advers uh, adversity is unavoidable. And so it is that we, we cannot pray away seasons. Does that make sense? You can't pray away God's seasons. The Lord has a purpose uh, in times of unfruitfulness. Uh, uh, seasons of struggle. These are periods that are there that help destroy our pride. and uh, Let us know that in our own ability that we are not able, but that we must become dependent upon Jesus Christ and upon God as our provider. And so it is there are seasons in life when the freezing winds of winter blow and the circumstances of our lives uh, uh, demand that we trust God. Even though we don't like the cold, I sure don't like the rain. My goodness, it's rained more. I don't know if it's ever going to stop. I hate it. I don't like the rain. I don't like this season. I don't like the cold seasons. But there is a purpose for this, what we're calling temporary inconvenience. The Apostle Paul says, they're light afflictions, which is but for a moment. That means that it's affliction. That means it's a season that's temporary. I'm thankful for that. So when I'm in the good times, I realize there's going to come a, a cold time. But when you're in the cold time, don't, come on. There's some people, you tell them, you're like, how's it going? They're like, well, it's going pretty good, but I know it's not going to last very long. You know what I mean? Same people. How you doing? Oh, it's going awful and it's never going to get better. Come on, how can you have faith that the good is only going to last a short time, but the bad is going to last forever? Let me tell you, the good, yes, there's temporary moments where it's great, but that bad time you're going through is just as temporary as the good season. It's just called the seasons. It's just called the seasons. It's going to rain sometimes. It's going to snow sometimes. You're going to smile sometimes. You're going to cry sometimes. They're going to live. And there's a time to die. There's a time to dance and a time to cry. It's life. That's life. That's not God punishing you. That's just the seasons of life. And there are some things that, that I've learned I can't change. I just have to survive. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, you can't change it, just make it through it. You gotta, that's why David said, yea, though I walk. <laughs> no, oh, I'm gonna be in this valley forever. No, you're not. It's just something you're going. Pastor, I'm just going 
through something. I'm, I, I, and it's, the devil tries to tell you that's where you're going to build your house. The devil is a liar. You ain't going to live in that depression. You ain't going to live in that situation. No, 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 no. It ain't always going to be a fight. You're not always going to be depressed and down. And No, no, no. You're just going. I'm going through. Why don't we sing that anymore? I'm going through. Da, 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 da. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I made up my mind. How do we sing it? Ain't going to turn around. I'm walking with my Jesus hand. Come on. Oh, I'm going through. I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I made up my mind. I'm not going to turn around. Walking with my Jesus hand. Man, I didn't even plan that. That just came to me in a moment. But that's what you need to tell the devil is I might be in it, but I'm not going to stay in it. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, that's why, come on, Enoch was favored because he walked with God. That means he always was moving through it, always going through it. It ain't going to be my destiny. It ain't going to be what defines me. I'm just going to go through it. And I've learned if I can't alter it, I'm going to outlive it. I said, if I can't change the circumstance, I'll just keep living. And baby, time will change it. Time changes it. It happens to all, all things and all people. Time, time, time. Blessed. The, the psalm, first psalm, first verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. Somebody say, I'm a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. I'm a tree that's planted, uh, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Uh, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever uh, he doeth shall prosper. God said, if you're going to prosper, you got to realize you got to be like a tree that's planted. And then it keeps going. It says the unrighteous, the wicked man, he is not one that's planted. He's one that's drifting and blown around, can't be stable, can't be committed to nothing. Uh, but somebody that's blessed uh, realizes I'm a tree and I have fruit in seasons that means there's seasons of no fruit but a righteous man understands I'm a tree this is a season of fruit yay this is a season of bloom yay this is a season of barrenness yeah Woo! oh and the leaf doesn't wither now that doesn't mean the leaf doesn't fall off that just means the source of the leaf is temporarily under the ground that doesn't mean it's not there but in the winter time, the tree sap just says, you know what? I'm going to go down into the roots. And he doesn't say goodbye. He says, I'll see you next season. I'll see you next spring. I'm just going, I'm just going to bury into my roots. I'm just going to get down into the ground and let the wind blow. I'm, well, you ought to change churches. You ought to change wives. You ought to go over there. You ought to change jobs. You ought to change your gender. That's, it's getting that crazy. No other generation could say that. No, baby. You don't need to change your job, your wife, or your gender. You just need to dig down and stay planted where you are and let the cold, icy winds of winter blow across your life and realize it ain't always going to be like this. It ain't always going to be winter doesn't last forever. The rain, it might pour 66 inches and we might get wet, but it stopped and it will stop again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember flying one time somewhere. And this has happened to me several times. And we'll get, and I can feel that plane bank up and start doing circles. Anybody ever done circles for a while in the air on an airplane? Yeah, here you go. Captain comes on and says, below us there's a storm. And it's not safe for us to land he says, so we're going to just have to maintain a holding pattern until we get the signal. And we'll be up there. I've been up there 30, 45 minutes just circling. And I'm wondering, we going to have enough gas? And just then the pilot will come on and say, don't worry. We put enough gas in here. Aren't you glad they didn't fuel the plane with just enough gas to get from A to B? 
but they took into account there might be some seasons where you're just going to have to. See, the question is, do you have enough faith to receive the blessing? The question is, do you have enough faith to just maintain the holding pattern? Oh, I know you can believe God for when you land in Miami and you're on your vacation. But can you believe God when he's just got you circling around the promise and you can't seem to get, can you, can you trust God through that season of your life? Or are you the person like the, the wicked and the unrighteous that says, I'm just going to, you know what, just fly me over there to Fort Lauderdale. Fly me over there to somewhere else. I don't have to go down to, come on somebody, but I'm not like that. They're, the righteous man says, no baby, i got a destiny. I, I've got fruit. And if I keep uprooting myself and moving from here to there the tree will die some point you got to put yourself down and say this is where I'm planted this is where I'm planted what is well I don't know if God knows where I'm at scripture says what is man that he is mind look at your neighbor and say God's mind is full of you I said what is God that he is mind full that means his mind is full. You aren't an afterthought. You're not something that he thinks about occasionally. You're not something that he gets to. His mind is consumed with me. So what should I trouble? Why should I fret? Why should I be sorrowful? His mind, Brother Jimmy Pittman, is full of Matthew Tuttle. His mind, Gary Rico, is full of you, Stephanie Rico. His mind, Caleb, is full of you. His mind, Kyle, is full of you. Come on, Brother Chris. You thought I forgot you. But his mind is full of you. He's working and expected in for your good. Woo. And it just seems to me, I've noticed through life, my life and working with people, that the ones that he loves greatly, he trusts greatly. And in so doing, he tests greatly. From Abraham here now to these two sisters and this brother. And twice in John chapter 11... The Bible says that Jesus loved them. He loved them. These, these weren't some kind of acquaintances. But these were people his mind was full of. He loved them. And the Bible says that Lazarus got sick and they sent word. In verse 6 of chapter 11, when he heard, here's what he did when he heard that his, his, his uh, friend, not his friend, just his friend, but the one that he truly loved. When he heard that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place. That means that this is what this means. This means Martha called the pastor and he didn't call right back in two minutes. Well, I called him one. You know, he didn't call me back in 37 seconds. I know he don't love me. You know what I'm talking about. You might not have said it, but you thought it. I prayed and God didn't heal me. He abode two days still in the same place. That means he, he delayed. He delayed. How on earth are you going to delay on somebody you love? How are you going to push the red button instead of the green button when you say you love them? How, I mean, come on, they're leaving you voicemails. Your voicemail is full of Martha. Well, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, where you at? Just checking on you. Just checking, wondering, did you get my last call? Then they're sending you texts. You know how they do, emails, Facebook messages, tagging you, all that stuff. Because a delay means you're not interested in me. Delay means there's things that are more important. Delay means you got distracted. Delay means my emergency does not matter to you I'm not important to you and and that's what you're sending me the signal you see Lazarus is needing some attention and we're not just talking about a, a Sunday afternoon visit we're talking about a guy that's about to die Jesus and you said you loved him how can you love me and not show up when I call you how can you say your mind is full of me and then leave me like this see now y'all ain't all clapping and shouting y'all kind of like oh, oh yeah yeah but you've all thought that we've all thought that if God really loves me, how can he intentionally delay the miracle in my life? Uh, it is the reason, of course, we know because we can read the end of the story. was because he was planning to do something in Bethany that had never been done before. He had a plan that he was about to do a miracle that had never been done before. Now, there are 28 miracles that Jesus works and we read of in Scripture. 35, there, 35 times they're recorded, so some of them are recorded multiple times. And this miracle that we're talking about today 
is the 21st miracle that takes place that Jesus did. And, 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 and though they had, so, so Mary and Martha were familiar with the fact that Jesus had power and, and they had witnessed the dead being raised. They had witnessed some of these things, but what they were about to witness uh, has never or never happened uh, again. It, it was something that was unprecedented uh, and God needed somebody he could trust to do something great with. Uh, and so he said, I'm going to have to w- let them wait just a little while because I'm going to do a miracle. I'm going to do a miracle like they've never seen. I'm about to do something so big that it's going to blow everybody's mind. But I need some people that I can trust in the storm. Trust through the season. Let me tell you something. For those of you that feel forgotten, those of you that are saying, where's God? And you're all frustrated, wondering why he hasn't sent you your $99 check yet because you prayed for it yesterday. You're getting mad at God. Let me tell you what God's really doing. He's setting you up. He's setting up the greatest thing. That's it's a setup. It's part of the plan. It's you all. Oh, you ought to just you ought to jab your neighbor in the ribs and say, "God's setting you up. He's just setting the table." I know it seems to be taken. But I've never ate a good meal that was cooked in two seconds. The best things take good long time. The greatest miracles take some time. The big buildings aren't built in a day. They're built over time. And the greatest miracles. Oh, come on, East Gate. Yeah, we've been through the season of, of cold and seemingly forgottenness. Yeah, Brother Good, we've been through times where we wondered where he was. But it was a setup. We went through a season when they left. And we called. Oh, we thought let's just give up but it was a setup for what God was going to do in our lives I believe that in my life and in the lives of these people and I'm not saying it flippantly I'm not saying it because I know it's going to get you excited I'm saying it because I believe it I believe in the, to the very core of my being that God is setting up a church in this world and I believe it's this church and it's going to reach the globe and they're going to look and they're going to say wow Wow. Look what God did. Look what God did. And you're going to say, oh baby, I know it looks good now. But if you'd have been back in the season of waiting. Do I have anybody that's been through the winter? And you can talk about the summer now. You, you, you are. Do I have anybody has got a good job, but you had to lose the other job to get the job you got. And then you were unemployed for a few. Come on, somebody. But you waited and you waited and you waited and he poured it out. And now your friends are saying, how on earth did that happen to you? You're saying, I just learned to wait. I didn't move to Colorado. I didn't change churches or wives or jobs. I just kept on waiting for they that wait upon the Lord shall. Your strength is in the weight you find. Woo! That saps under the ground saying, just you wait. Just you wait. Just you wait till I see summer. Just you wait till I get a glimpse of the sun. <laughs> I said, because when you see the sun. Oh, y'all don't even, I can't even insinuate things. I got to explain everything. And I don't have time. Son is Jesus. Okay. When you see Jesus, oh, the season changes. Oh, I said when you bring the sun into it, uh, the season changes. Uh, and all of a sudden, warmth and light uh, begins to pierce into the way. <laughs> Woo! Jesus, he's headed over to Bethany. He, but before he even gets to town, he gets, he's got a welcome committee. They, they, I mean, they, they're going to welcome him, make him feel real special. It's John chapter 11, verse 20. Here's Martha. You can be Jesus. You, do, you preach so good, you can be Jesus. John 11 and 20, put it up there. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary, Martha's coming out. She said, I ain't going, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Give him peace of my mind. Mm-hmm. My, oh, I am. I'm letting my brother die like that. And she goes up. She said, you stay here, Mary. I'm going to go let him have it. Uh-huh. And Jesus, stand up, Jesus. Go, go. Next verse. 
Then she said unto Jesus, she's looking at him eyeball to eyeball. Jesus, if you would have been here, you could have changed the situation. This didn't have to happen if you'd have just done what I said. If you'd have just listened to me, I wouldn't have lost my job. If you would have just done what I said, my cousin, my father wouldn't have died. But you didn't do it the way I said you were supposed to do it. And she's mad. Let me tell you something. We all get there every but once in a while, but you better watch out how you talk to God when you're frustrated. He don't need your solution. His mind is full of you. She wasn't lying. If Jesus would have been there, he probably would have raised him from the dead. Wouldn't, wouldn't have let him die at all. She said it was true. But, but, but she, now, she now thinks that Jesus is in a pickle. Y'all say that here in Texas? Y'all know what I mean by that? Jesus in a bind. What do y'all say? Tied up? Jesus, Jesus, he's, let me tell you something. Jesus has never dialed 911. He's never called for the backup. <laughs> he doesn't know emergency. He doesn't get stressed. He doesn't get worried. He doesn't wonder how. He doesn't ever. Some of y'all think God's in a pickle, tied up, bound up, calling 911 about your situation, baby. He's not. He's not worried about how you're going to get out. He's not worried about the enemy coming against you. He's not panicking. He's not afraid. Hold oh, a God that we could put our trust in Him. And, 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 and then she's like, you, you should have done, you should have done what I told you to do. Verse 22. But I know. <laughs> but I know you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> she don't believe that any more than anything. She don't believe that he can do anything or she wouldn't have been cussing him out the previous verse. God, if you'd have told me what, done what I told you to do, then something else could have happened. I know you can do anything. No, you don't. You're just trying to sound spiritual about carnality. You're just trying to spiritualize. You're like saying, well, maybe it's just the will of the Lord that I'm always sick. That's just spiritualizing something that's not true. It's not God's will. You live in continual conflict. It's seasonal. You got to stop putting the will of God on things that aren't the will of God. Come on. Well, it may be the will of God. Hey, 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 hey. You just need to start claiming the word of God. For in the word of God is the will of God. Come on, and I got a whole lot more verses that say he wants you to prosper and be in health than he does want you to be weak, sick, downtrodden, and beat up all the time. That ain't the will of God. That's you trying to be spiritual and justify not living in prosperity. I know you can do. And Jesus looks at her and says... Your brother's going to get up. I can't do the moonwalk, but I'd have been doing it right there if I was her. I'd have been backing up. Oh, my. And then I'd have been doing some kind of Pastor Tuttle dance. you telling me my brother's going to die. He's going to live. Yeah. But she says, no, nah, yeah, yeah, I know. And that's what God does every Sunday to you. Comes by your life and says, you can be healed. You can have peace. You can have joy. You can have it. He comes by every Sunday, every Wednesday, and tells you there's a better life. There's a better way, the best life. If you just stand up and live. And, and she says, and, and she says, oh, yeah, here's how, here's how we justify it. I know he'll rise again in the resurrection. Well, I know one day in heaven I'll be happy. Come on, somebody. You procrastinate promises and delay them. Say, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. God's trying to give you a word right now. I don't really live. And Jesus said, next verse. Next verse, 25, let's go. We might be froze up up there. Does anybody know what Jesus said? Anybody remember? There was one person that knew it. Say it loud. You were right. He said, I am the resurrection 
and the life. He, he, he didn't say, I will be. It wasn't future tense. It was present tense. He looked at her and said, why do you keep talking about tomorrow being the day of your salvation? I'm here now and I am what you need. Ooh, I just wish I had somebody that could believe that God is exactly what he said. He is. Ooh, he doesn't say, I can resurrect her. He says, I am resurrection. Matter of fact, there's nowhere in the Bible that says God can. Y'all quiet now. Ooh. Nowhere in your Bible does it say God can. Because if God can, that puts, that, that makes it to where I can manipulate God. And that's what some of us try to do. Well, God, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fast 37 days and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to drink any, anything but Coca-Cola for two months. And, and you are going to do it. You do this, it, you, if you'll do this, I'll do, and then now, it all, now so now, see, that's a manipulator. I'll, you can't manipulate God. You can't manipulate God. He, 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 there's nowhere it says, he, and you're just waiting saying, well, I, I know, I know God can. No, 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 no. He that cometh to God uh, must believe that, that he what? He is. Not he can, he, uh, now unto him that, that is, that is able. Come on somebody. Oh. 158 times it says God is. God is. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. The eternal God is is thy refuge God is come on and he hath fought for you for the Lord God is a sun and a shield for the Lord God my defense and my God is my rock of refuge our holy God is holy behold God is my salvation Behold, God is my strength in John 3 and 33 God is true Romans 1 and 9 for God is my witness 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 God is faithful Corinthians 1 125 God is wiser than men Philippians 1 and 8 for God is my record 1st Timothy 4 and 4 God is good 2nd Timothy 2 and 9 God is, I got 157 more to go God is not bound Hebrews 1 and 8 God is forever and ever 1 and 1st John 1 and 5 God is light 1st John 3 and 20 God is greater than my heart 1 John 4 and 8 God is love John 5 and 9, God is greater. God is, God is, God is, God is. Woo! Who do I say sent me, Moses said. Who do I tell Pharaoh has sent me? He says, you tell him, uh, don't tell him the deliverer because that's, don't because they might change it up. Tell him the I am. Oh, not the I. What's I am that I am? You know what I am that I am means? It means I will be whatever you need me to be. What's God? Whatever I need him to be, he is. He is the healer. He is love. He is one. But you know what the, more, the, the number one greatest, the, the most a repetitive God is statement in the Bible? It's not God is love tw two times. God is one three times. God, here's what he, here's, here's the one, nine times. God is with thee. That's the number one God is statement in the whole Bible. He says more important. Come on, somebody. What are you saying, Pastor? What, I'm, what he's trying to tell you through that is this. You need to stop praying for healing. You, go, you don't have to pray for all the... All you say is, God, if I can get you next to me, I've got everything I need. 
<laughs> and so he says, I am a healer, but more important, I can be with you. I am your deliverer, and I want to be with you. I am your way maker, and I want to be with you. What he's saying is, you can have me. That means you can have all 158 times of my promises. Everything I said I am. That's why Esther, uh, when the king said, what do you want? What'd she say? You. Then she, he said it again. What do you want? You. Because she knew. She knew if I get the king, I got everything. What if you spent more time at the altar instead of doing this? Oh God, can you please provide for me? Can you please? Can you please? No. How about you just start saying, Oh God, you are my, you're a provider. God, you're, because <laughs> if you start seeking him instead of the, I don't want my kids to love me for what I buy them. Come on. I said, I don't want my kids to love me because I buy them things. I buy them things because I love them. They don't, come on. What I like is when they just come up to me, just hug me. Daddy, I love you. You know, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what do you want? <laughs> daddy, you're the best daddy ever. All right, where's my wallet? Because I already know you want something. Man, I'm going to tell you, if you really wanted to master that, kids, thank God they're not in here. You just go up to your daddy and say, Daddy, you're the best. What you need, son? Nothing. Just want to let you know you're the best. Hey, every dad in here would be like, hold on. Open up your mouth. Open up. Let's look in there. There's some kind of, some kind of program in there, radio frequency off in your brain. Where's the antennas? No, Daddy, I just love you. You're good to me. And I, and I love you. Daddy. Next day, hey, Dad. Yeah, what's up, son? Man, man, you're so good. Thanks for providing for me, Daddy. Come on, somebody. You know what I'd do? I'd probably walk in that boy's room about four fifth day of that and say, I wonder what this boy's needing. I want to just get him something. I'll be at the grocery store buying my own chocolate-frosted cornflakes, and I would see them Fruity Pebbles. I'm like, you know what? I don't like Fruity Pebbles, but I know somebody that does, and I I'm just going to get these for him because, man, he's been, ooh. Because when Lewis and McCall and Savannah got me, they got everything they needed in a daddy. All they got to do is love me and keep me. Come on. And that's what you got to realize about God. You don't need to be up here begging for things. What you need to just do is say, Lord, you're enough. Uh, you're, and he said, and I will provide. I will. Yeah, he said you have not because you ask not. He knows the heart. He knows the heart. But let it be that my praise outweighs my petition. Our God, oh, heavenly Father, hallowed be thine. And that means holy is your name. Yo, Karabas. I'll talk more about later I, I've got to go man time goes fast when you're having fun I want I, I just seek me find me make it about me stop trying to manipulate me you, you can't do that he wants you to realize you need him so so now I got to go quick verse 28 11 28 but the screens, our screen man's doing a great job. We got some new projectors. Don't they look good? Thank you, Brother Nash. We love you. Amen. I said all that to buy you some time. 1128. Amen. And because I'm in it. And when, G, and when she so said, uh, she went away. So after she gave Jesus a piece of her mind, she's going to get herself a crime partner. She's going to be like, hey, hey, Mary, Mary, hey, now look. We got to talk in secret. We, we can't. Because I, I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a secret. The master's calling you. Why is she saying it so secretly? Because it's a lie. <laughs> Jesus never called for her. She just wants somebody to be a partner in her crime. See, because mad people need company. <laughs> You ever met a mad person that was happy to be mad by himself or herself? Oh, no, 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 no. They're going to get on Facebook and tag everybody. They, 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 they. Come on, it's, come on. We, we have secret sisters, but we don't have sisters with secrets. A whole different thing. 
I said, that's a whole different thing. A whole different thing. Somebody say, that's a different thing. She, 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 you know what, you know what the psalmist said? All that hate me whisper together against me. They devise things. You better watch out when you got people, hey man, come on over here, man. Hey, there's only two types of people that take a sheep out of the fold. The shepherd and a wolf. If your pastor you ain't talking to you, hey, I just need to talk to you about something because I love you. I'm not going to correct you in the microphone unless you don't want to be over here. Then the Bible says I can. I try not to do that. Sometimes I do it kind of insinuating. I don't know if you've noticed that. God does. I, do, but I never send none of y'all's names, but the Bible says I can if y'all don't do it. Come on, somebody. Jesus didn't care much about feelings. He cared about eternity. Yeah. Hey, come on over here, man. Let's talk. You know, I don't know why he's not letting you do a little more singing because you're my favorite singer. Oh, why haven't you preached in a while? Come on, somebody. Next thing you know, you're decapitating and being eaten by a wolf, baby. And next thing you know, you're, that spirit is on you. Yeah, it is. And so she says, go, go. Master, won't you go give him a piece of your mind? If he'd have been here, if he'd have been here, this wouldn't happen. You don't have to be having these tears. It don't have to be like this. He don't have to do it like that. And Mary, Mary said, okay, okay, all right. So she, next thing you know, we got Mary running up to Jesus now, but you got to go. Go to the next verse. I hope it's there. Uh, and as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. She don't know it's a lie. She don't know she's been lied to. She, but, but look, verse nine, here she comes to Jesus. What she do? What she see? Now Martha, go to the next verse quickly. And Jesus was not yet coming to town, but he was in that place where Martha met him. Keep going. And the Jews which went there comfort her. And they, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She goeth into the grave to weep there. Go next. Amen. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she didn't do it like Martha did it. Martha came and said, I'm going to tell you what. Now, she was just as hurt. She had experienced equal pain. She was in just as bad of a situation, Brother Randall. But there was a total difference in the way she did business. When she came to Jesus, she came like this and said, Jesus, the same words that Martha said, Mary said. But Martha said it with an attitude and Mary said it with worship. She said with tears streaming down her face at an altar. She said, Jesus, I don't know why you did it like this. I don't know why you did it like this. I don't understand what you're doing in my life. I can't, but you're still good and you're still worthy. You cut off my son. Martha got a big long sermon about the resurrection and the rapture and her attitude. You know what Mary got? Look at the next verse. Man, we need an apple up there. They said if we got a MacBook, it would go faster. Do I seem like a slow kind of preacher? Get up to verse 35. Go 35. Two words. See, 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 Martha got a sermon. Mary got emotion. If you, I'm tired of that preacher preaching at me. Then start worshiping God. I'm tired of him, my heart being pricked. The change in worship God. The way you sit in church and your attitude towards the word of God has everything to do with what happens in your life. That's why pastors always, come on, Bubba, get up at the front of the altar. Don't stand back there and just kind of piddle around. No, get up here and say, God, I don't know what's going on. And when you get down on your knees and when you're in an atmosphere of worship, you can say things like, like God I don't understand you God what are you doing I don't know why this happens to me but I love you anyway you're still bigger than all that you're great and greatly to be praised I wish I had somebody that would get the posture of a praiser that would get uh, uh, God I don't need another sermon I need some tears to streak down your face and I want to be touched I want you to be touched by the feelings of my infirmity touch me oh uh, uh. 
proud, negative people, they don't praise God. It's okay, it's okay to question God. Jesus questioned. Why is thou forsaken me? Philip questioned. What are you talking about? It's all right to have questions. We all have questions. As long as you're asking those questions with your head up against his chest, as long as you're underneath the cross and you can taste the hyssop and, and feel the blood dropping on your head, as long as you're close to him, you can ask him anything. As long as you're a worshiper, it's okay to be frustrated. But if you're not a worshiper, your frustrations will become bitterness. I said, if you're not a praiser, this is how you get low, baby. This is how you humble yourself. Pride, people don't praise God. And they end up angry at God. You ought to just praise him right where you are. Uh, you, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about patty cake in 13 seconds till I go to the next better point. You ought to praise him like you don't understand why hell's break. I don't know why, but I know me and I'm a worshiper. Come on, can you worship him when you don't understand him? Can you praise him in winter? I said, can you praise him in winter? Can you praise him in winter? Every time you find Martha, she's on her knees. I mean, Mary. Martha's cooking. Mary's worshiping. Mary's washing his feet, the Bible says, with tears streaming down her face. She's a worshiper. She's a worshiper. It is praise. It's worship that gets you close to God. It's what brings God to you. And He is. And so, no more sermons. No more points. Just tears. And with tears streaming down his face, he says... Take me. I gotta fix this. I can't I can't have you hurting like this. Take me to the place where you put him. You show me where you laid him. He said, baby, baby, take me to the place. Take me to that place where. And they got there, and the Bible says when they got there, he said, Roll away the stone. And Martha said, She's still mad. What's Martha say? You remember? Don't roll it away, he stinks. Now, hold on just a second now. Hold on. You're going to let a little bad smell hinder you from a miracle? You mean you're going, you mean you're going to let you? It ain't because it, no, no, no. You're more worried about your nostrils than you are your son. I thought, I thought the whole reason you were mad is because you wanted him to live. And now you say, now, now you're worried about yourself. Because it never was about your brother, was it, Martha? It's always been all about you why you can't worship. Well, that's just not my personality. I think it stinks that we have to shout. Well, that praying, that just stinks. Come on, some, nah, nah. See, it's, it's, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's, it's amazing how bitter people, bitter people would rather live bitter than blessed. Bitter, bitterness gets you to the place where you, you keep the door to a miracle locked. Bitterness will keep your brother in a grave. You'd rather have your brother in a grave anyway. It kind of justifies your bad attitude the whole time. Mm. Come on. Come on, somebody. That's where, uh, hey, what you saying, Pastor? I'm saying you better never let it get in you. If your feelings have been hurt, you ought to run to that altar and cry and dance until those feelings get healed. Because what will end up happening, listen to me, we all know it, but you just listen to me. What will end up happening, you've witnessed it happen, it will get a root inside of you. And then God will come to roll back the stone, but you'll prevent that from happening because you're full of bitterness. And, and I don't want to do that. I've learned, see, I'm four days along. I've learned how to live with my pain, baby. You can't get bitter. I don't care what they did. It doesn't matter. I know it's bad. I'm not justifying molestations. I'm not justifying abuse. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying you can't go on until you've got it out of your spirit. I'm not saying you're not going to have a scar. I'm not saying they shouldn't go to jail. I'm saying until you can get down and say Lord I love you in spite of it and I don't understand why you allowed that to happen I don't know why she left with my kids I don't know why I lost my but God you're good anyway
anyway. You're good anyway. Woo! I've never met a radical worshiper with a bad attitude. Inevitably, the complainers are never the worshipers. So if you've got a scheduled appointment with me to complain, I better see you praising God tonight. Because I don't take complaints from people that don't praise. Well, I just don't like the temperature. Well, it wouldn't be quite so cold if you worshipped. Well, I, I think it's too loud. You, want the, you think it's too loud? Do this. Hallelujah! And if you start shouting, it won't be as loud with me screaming. You know the reason it's got to be so loud? Because everybody else is shouting. And we're, come on somebody. And you're sitting there like a sourpuss. But if you lift up your voice, uh, the volume goes down. When you lift up your praise, the temperature gets right. When you get rolling on the floor, Sister Sally don't look crazy no more. Well, so-and-so did this to me and they said that about... "Ah." But it ain't about what they did to me. It's about what he did for me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. My eyes are focused on heaven. I can't see my brother. I didn't plan on saying that. That's the Holy Ghost. You got to get unforgiveness out of your heart. You got to give hatred out of your heart. You got to get sourness and bitterness out of your heart. And I know you're going through hell and you forgive, feel forgotten. But you got to get your anger towards God. And you got to get it out of your heart. I'm mad at God. Ah, you got to forgive. You got to let go of it. You've got to say, I'm sorry. God, you're worthy. Well, I should be done. Come on, we're not going to finish it. I'll finish it tonight or tomorrow. Some other time, I don't know. But right now, there's something here. I don't have to get to the final point of this little message. What we need to do is get the point of the message. And God is speaking to somebody. God is just right now. I don't know. I just feel. I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost. I, uh, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Come on, Pentecostal. Come on, Christian. Come on, follower of Christ. I feel God walking past your heart right now. Now, I'm not talking about you coming with your brother this morning. I'm talking about you coming by yourself and saying, God, I don't understand why you let them do that to me. I don't understand why that happened happen that way but Lord I love you 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 Come on, Mary. She had a whole lot of people looking at her, watching what she was going to do. Mar- Martha, come on, her, her secret sister with a secret over there hoping she choose Jesus out. Next thing you know, Martha's blowing the mind of the Jew, blowing the mind of the church gossip. She's up at the front giving God praise with her brother in a grave when he could have healed him, when you said you loved me. But God, I still love you in the seasons of I don't understand, in the middle of I don't know why. I wonder if I could get somebody just to worship God. Come on, get the root of bitterness out. Get unforgiveness out. Come on, get it out. Get it out. Come on, let me preach to somebody in a season. It's a season. It's going to pass. It's not going to last. It's good. You, but you on oh no, it'll be there until you learn to praise it out. It'll be there until you learn to shout it out. It'll be there. Oh, 
If you're here and you've never received the Holy Ghost, you ought to let him fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives evidence. Come on, let it come. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. The healer's in the house. The way makers in the house. The answer's in the house. The door's in the house. The bridge over troubled water's in the house. The advocate's in the house. The high priest is in the house. The way maker's in the house. Come on, he's here. The father's in the house. The son is in the house. The spirit's in the house. The alpha's in the house. The beginning's in the house. The omega's in the house. The way maker and the ending is in the Whatever you need. Come on, if you need something to begin, you've got the beginning. If you need a chapter to close, you've got the ending. Whatever you need, it's in the house. Whatever you need, it's in the house. It's in the house. It's in the house. It's in the house. Oh, come on. Come on, you lift your voice. Lift your voice. Don't let me cheerlead you into God's presence right now. Eastgate, come on. There's a maturity level that says I don't have to be pushed. I don't have to be prodded. I can be led. Show me the door of victory and I'll walk through it. I'm not going to open my eyes so you think I'm talking to you. But if you're standing and watching, that's the spirit of Martha. If your eyes are open and you're watching someone else praise right now, that's what Martha did. You, but I need some Marys. Come on, I don't know who I'm talking to. My eyes are closed. But I just feel there's some people in this place, your eyes are open and you're not even focused. When you've got the resurrection in your midst, you ought to be on your knees. Eyes closed, heaven, hands raised. You ought to have your voice elevated to the highest decibel level that you can absolutely alliterate in, out of your spirit and you ought to be giving God praise you ought to be giving him praise Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me God help me I need you